Today we'll be demonstrating the peripheral vascular examination. Now to start out, you're going to do a visual inspection of the patient. So preferably you'd like to be able to see the areas that you'll be inspecting. Make sure the patient's comfortable. As we look across the front here of Lindsay, what we're looking for is any scarring perhaps skin changes. A scar in the sternum might be indicative of cardiovascular problems in the past, such as surgery or something. Um, we're going to observe general skin tone and color. We're looking for any cyanosis, any pallor. We're looking at venous filling generally on both sides to make sure that there's symmetry. If one side were less full, it might be indicative of a peripheral vascular disease. Once we've done that, we're going to zero in on the hands here. We're looking at the fingers. Have you turn your hands over for a sec? Thank you. Looking for any stains, something that might help us uh, follow in with patient history. Perhaps the patient's a smoker. Once we've done that, we're going to assess for temperature. So we're going to assess both sides so we can compare left and right using the backs of our hands. We're going to start out with the hands. Okay, so yeah, nice and symmetrical. You can turn your hands over for a sec. I'm just going to check here. Perfect. Okay, and then back over and then just follow it up on both sides. So we're assessing symmetry here in the forearms and go to the back of the forearms, working our way up into the middle arm here, bicep region, and finally up into the soldiers, shoulders. Okay, good. So that's the initial step and we're comparing left and right and making sure there's good symmetry and making note of anything that stands out such as scarring. Next, we're moving on to capillary refill times. What you want to see here is that the capillaries refill within at least two seconds. There's a few different ways of doing this. The way I was trained a million years ago was looking at the nail beds here. We'd called it finger blanching. So what you would do is you would pick two fingers um, here. So you're going to do it at the same time. And we're going to squeeze the nail beds for about four to five seconds. And then as we let go, we're observing to make sure that that pink color comes back within two seconds. And it looks pretty symmetrical. Let's do the middle one just for another example here. So we're squeezing. And as we let go, nice, good. So turn the hands over. So an alternative method, which I've seen before is similar, but you would just squeeze the fingertips, for example. So same idea. We would squeeze both. And then as soon as we let go, we should see the color come back within a few seconds. So yeah, there you go, really fast. Within two seconds is ideal. And that is the capillary refill time. Now let's move on to pulses. When taking the pulse, we're gonna be looking at the rate, uh, rhythm, the volume, the general feel of the blood flow. So starting out, we'll check the radial uh, pulse. So I'm gonna first go on to this side here. Nice strong pulse. You wanna compare the two sides. And as in Lindsay here, they are synchronous. So you do want synchronicity. Now, if they happen to be different, that might be indicative of a radio radial delay. And if that's the case, you might suspect a, a stenosis, maybe in the subclavian artery, or perhaps some kind of aortic uh, uh, dissection, unfortunately, or coarctation. So this is something that you want to check and make sure that it's equal on both sides and that they're synchronous. Moving up from the radial pulses here, we're moving up to the brachial pulse. Do you mind straightening the arms a little? Perfect, thank you. Okay, good. So let's see, let's make sure we get one first. Yeah, there it is. And this side, perfect. Yeah, nice and synchronous. Good rate, strong pulses. Okay, now we're gonna move up to the carotid arteries. Um, ideally, you'd want to do this on both sides as well. But let's just show one side, it'll be easier. So if you turn your head towards me this way, so we can see where the sternocleidomastoid muscle is. So if you come back to center, between that muscle and the tracheal cartilage, right in this spot in here, is where you'll palpate the carotid artery. Don't push too hard, because you don't want to cause any pain or limit blood flow to the patient's brain. Not a good thing. Good, yeah, nice and strong, perfect. Now let's check the other side as well. I'm just gonna get in here. Doing okay with the pressure? Okay, good, mm -hmm. yeah. Feels the same as the opposite side, perfect. Okay. Now, having done that, the next thing you'll do is you'll want to auscultate the carotid arteries. Now, the purpose of the auscultation is to make sure that there's no bruise. And what a bruise is, is that forced 
blood through the artery during the systolic contraction of the heart, and it could be indicative of atherosclerotic plaque or a problem there. So that's why we're doing this. So to demonstrate, I'm gonna put the stethoscope on. I'm gonna use the bell for this. Okay, and I'm gonna have you turn slightly away there. And basically where you were palpating the carotid artery, you're going to listen. There we go. Okay, good. Good. So just make sure you spend, you know, enough time there to get a good assessment of what you're hearing. Now let's palpate and auscultate the abdominal aorta. So for this, you'll have to have your patient's midsection here exposed. Is it okay, Lindsay, if I go ahead and palpate? Yeah, mm -hmm. sorry if my hands are cold. So just going to find the midline. And it is slightly to the left, and there it is. And you can assess for general rhythm and rate and just feel of it. And it feels nice and strong and regular. Okay. Having done that, now we're going to auscultate once again. Make sure we don't hear any brewies. Okay. And once again, spend enough time so that you can actually listen and identify what it is you're, you're hearing. Okay, good. Oh, sounds good. And that is palpation and auscultation of the abdominal aorta. Now that we've assessed the upper torso, arms, abdominal aorta, we're moving down the body. Similar to what we did with the arms, we're going to visually inspect the legs. We're looking for any visible scars, any changes in skin uh, tone or color, cyanosis, pallor. In some people where there's reduced uh, uh, venous flow and blood flow, they might get hair loss in certain areas. So be mindful of that. Then we're gonna assess temperature. So once again, using the back of our hands, we're gonna assess both feet at the same time. And we're gonna move our way up. Good, okay. Now check here. And then the outside. And then moving up here. And here. Okay, and then similar to what we did with the nail beds in the hands, we're gonna look at the capillary refill time. So we would go down to the toes and just as we did there, we would select the toes here, both sides, we would squeeze and then letting go and making sure that we see that refill occur within a couple of seconds. Next, let's assess the femoral artery. So starting out with this one, it is a sensitive area, so make sure that your patient gives you permission to go ahead. So Lindsay, is it okay if we examine the area? Yeah. Mm -hmm. So what I want you to do is find the front of your pelvis, the pubic bone with your hands. So you can just kind of place, okay, perfect. So what we're gonna do is draw a line from there to the ASIS, the anterior superior iliac spine, and right in the middle is where you should feel the femoral pulse, right at the midpoint, and there it is. So I'm gonna check the other side as well, so just so you know. There we go. And once again, we're making sure that both are synchronous. Good, nice and strong. Okay. Now, we'll be moving down the chain and we'll be assessing the popliteal arteries. So for this one, you're gonna have the patient bend the knee slightly. And I'm gonna take my hands into that space in the back of the knee, and as I push in, I will feel the pulse. Yeah, and there it is. Doing okay? Mm -hmm. Okay. So let me move one hand out of the way so you can kind of see. There it is. Okay, let's assess the other side here. So bend this knee. Perfect. Okay, there we are. So right in the popliteal fossa. Nice and deep. Yeah, and there it is. Okay. So once again, comparing the two sides, making sure there's a nice, strong, regular rhythm. Perfect. Okay. And now, finally, we're moving down to the ends of the feet here, and we're going to assess two arteries, one being the, tibial, the posterior tibial artery, which is behind the medial malleolus. So for this one, you can palpate it right behind the medial malleolus. Yeah, there it is, I can feel it, nice and steady. Once again, you're doing this on both sides. 
And something I like to do is, having palpated this artery, in this position, if we pull the big toe back, you can see the tendon here of the extensor halicus longus. And if we move just lateral to it, around the height of the second and third cuneiforms, we'll be able to palpate the dorsal pedal artery. And there it is. Pull that toe back just for a sec so you can see. So here's the tendon. You'll feel a little depression in here and right in there you can feel a nice pulse. Good. Okay, good. Yeah, and relax. So once again, always assessing both sides, comparing left and right. One thing to note, if you happen to see swelling, redness in an area and you suspect there may be a problem, at that point I would auscultate the artery, see if you can identify a brewery, but when in doubt, be safe. Refer to that patient back to the medical doctor and if needed, they'll be referred out for an ultrasound and that'll be the definitive test to make sure that there isn't a problem there. So that is the basic assessment of the lower part of the body, once again assessing both sides. Now lastly, I'd like to discuss blood pressure. Now that's a vital part of the peripheral vascular examination. So in the clinic, we will take blood pressure in a seated position, left arm and right arm will compare the two values. Ideally, they shouldn't be that different. If there is quite a difference, that's something that you should discuss with the patient and ultimately have them consult with their medical doctor. Another thing to note is if the patient has a history of dizziness or lightheadedness or of fainting spells, then you may suspect orthostatic hypotension. So what that is, is a drop in blood pressure as the patient stands. Ideally, as a patient stands, your blood pressure should go up a little bit as the body tries to balance out and prepare for movement. If you suspect that, you could take the blood pressure in a sitting or lying down position and then have the patient stand and retake that blood pressure and see if there's quite a discrepancy or a drop. And once again, the cause is usually something benign, but if you do suspect something like that, discuss it with the patient and ultimately have them follow up with their medical doctor as well. Now that concludes our peripheral examination. Quite often we'll combine that examination with other orthopedic testing or even our neurological testing. If you're interested in seeing those examinations, please check out our examination playlist and thank you for watching.